Hello, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to The Discriminating Gamer, the board game review show that inspired the following quote from Will Wheaton. It's the only board game review show that I'll watch. Now let go of my family, you sick ba- Ladies and gentlemen, today we're going to go ahead and take a look at the carefree days of the Cuban Missile Crisis. I am, of course, talking about 13 Days from Ultra Pro and Jolly Roger Games. In 13 Days from Ultra Pro and Jolly Roger Games, two superpowers duke it out. That's right, flight and heat vision actually... What? The United States and the Soviet Union actually stare each other down eye to eye. This, of course, recreates the October 1962 confrontation that took place around Cuba, in which, of course, the United States and the Soviet Union came arguably as close to nuclear war as they did at any other time during the Cold War. Of course, you might consider August 1961 with the erection of the Berlin Wall to be comparable. Frederick Kempe addressed that in his book, Berlin 1961, which was very good. But certainly, the Cuban Missile Crisis was really, really tense. Now, the map is divided into different battlegrounds throughout the world. Nine different battlegrounds, to be sure. And these are divided into things like military, political, or kind of world opinion, depending on which battle zone they are. There's a a military and a political one for Cuba. Uh, Turkey, I think, is political. Italy is political. But then you've got some in uh, other parts of the world that are, as I say, world opinion. Berlin's military as well. In addition to the battleground uh, states, you've also got three different DEFCON tracks that, again, represent military, political, and uh, world opinion. You also have, in three of the DEFCON tracks, kind of three sections in each of the tracks. Uh, DEFCON 3, DEFCON 2, and DEFCON 1. You have, in each of the three across, you have a blue and a red uh, token representing either the Soviet Union or the United States in that particular kind of realm. That marks where they are on the DEF contract for that particular, as I say, that particular unit, you know, military, political, world opinion. And if at any time, uh, at the end of the at the end of the round, when you, you check for a nuclear war, if anyone has a token in the uh, top spot in the DEFCON 1, a nuclear war is triggered, they lose the game, whoever triggered it. At the same time, if any, if all three of your tokens are in the number 2 spot at that point, then you trigger a nuclear war. So it's really easy to trigger a nuclear war in this game, just like it is in real life, I'm assuming. The game is played over a series of three rounds, uh, where essentially you're playing four cards each round. But there's also a series of steps in each particular round. First of all, the very first thing you do every round is you escalate the DEFCON tracks. Wherever your DEFCON markers are, they all advance one. So that's really scary. And you've got to be careful because it's really easy for you to get in a situation where you're going to potentially trigger a nuclear war unless you do something during the course of your uh, turn to kind of bring some of these uh, DEFCON markers back from the brink. Next, you're going to draw agenda cards. Essentially, both of you, uh, both players will get three agenda cards. Now, these may either uh, be the battlegrounds, uh, places on the, on the map, or they may be the particular DEF CON tracks. What you're going to do is you've got three of them, and you're going to put your flags on all three of those things on the board. However, you're only going to keep one and slide it under your part of the board, and that's the one that you really care about, because that's the one you're going to score. So your opponent knows within three where you're really trying to score but he doesn't know exactly which one it is now you're actually going to get strategy cards you're going to get a total of five strategy cards dealt out to you you're only going to play four of them during the round however now as you're playing the game with the strategy cards uh, you can either play the strategy card to place cubes in one of the battlegrounds a number of cubes on the card or you can play it for a specific event now if you are playing a card, if you're in the United States and you play a card that is a Soviet Union event, the Soviet player has the option to trigger the event before you place the car, the, place the cubes. Um, but again, you have to play a certain number of cards, so you're going to be playing cards that are going to benefit your opponent, depending on the, the hand you were dealt. Now, when you're placing cubes in the battleground, obviously you're, you, you want to go for some of the battlegrounds that... that your agenda is and and you don't want to be too obvious with that early in the round because you're each going to have a chance to play four cards you've also got to determine initiative before you play any cards and the first round soviet union player can say well i'm going to play first or you're going to play first and then from then on it's whoever is trailing in prestige who's ever behind essentially they get to go ahead and they pick whoever gets initiative so 
as you're playing these cards back and forth, you don't want to tip your hand. You don't want to let them know too early which one is, is real. So there's kind of a bluff, double bluff thing going on here about where you're trying to play these markers. At the same time, too, you may want to go for some of those world opinions because that may give you certain other advantages, certain other ways to score points as well. So you're, you're doing this thing back and forth where you're playing cards. Some of them are going to hurt you, but they're going to kind of help you too. But sometimes they hurt more than help. But you know the other guy's making those same tough choices every round because which card's he going to play? And, and, and which card is really going to help him out when he needs it? And when is the, the time to play that card? So you're going to go back and forth like that playing the different cards. Now at the end, after you played four cards each, you're going to take your fifth card and you're going to place it in what was known as the Aftermath uh, table. And that Aftermath deck is going to kind of keep growing, keep growing, keep growing throughout the game. After that, you're going to go ahead, check for any of those world opinion bonuses. Uh, maybe one of you may get the personal letter card, which allows you to get, gives you some advantages when you play it with a strategy card, gives you an extra cube. Uh, that can switch back and forth there. Then you go ahead and each of you reveal your agenda. You reveal your agenda and you see, okay, do I am I ahead in the DEF contract or do I have more cubes than my opponent in the agenda I'm trying to score? Depending on the number, uh, how many more cubes you have than your opponent, that's essentially how many points you're going to score in that particular battleground. And when you take these things together, you add them together, you're then going to go ahead and move your score marker up. There's only one score marker, and it's kind of a tug of war. It goes to five on the Soviet side, five on the American side, and you're going to slide it over to one side, and then maybe back again, depending on if the other guy scores. Next, you're going to go ahead and check the DEF CON track. If, again, one of those markers is in the uh, DEF CON 1, that person has triggered a nuclear war. If one player has three in the DEF CON 2, you've triggered a nuclear war. So, again, you got to watch that. One of the things, too, is if you place two markers in the same spot, if the card you played had a nuclear symbol on it, that means you actually bump up the DEF CON level in that area. But you can also, with those cards, you can remove cubes. And if you remove two cubes from a spot, then you can actually lower the DEF CON uh, rating uh, for that particular area. Now, you keep doing that for three rounds. At the end of the third round, what you do is you see where you are on the prestige track, but it's not over. Because then what you do is you play all those cards in the aftermath deck that you went ahead, that you played, that you put there, that you didn't play, rather, that you put under there. And indeed, one of the world opinion things lets you look at the top card of the deck and decide whether you want to put it in there or not. And what you do is you put any UN cards, which are kind of neutral cards, you put those aside, you put all the American cards out, you put all the Soviet cards out, and you count up the cubes on the cards. Who's ever gotten the most cubes gets two more prestige, and that can go ahead and kind of tilt the balance there. Whoever has the most prestige at the end of the scoring session wins 13 days. Tug of War scoring, DEF CON tracks, playing cards that help the other guy, battleground zones. What is this, Twilight Struggle, he said with suspicion. Well, I gotta tell you. I saw this game, read the rules, I'm thinking to myself, this is Twilight Struggle Light. That's what they're going for. I really think that. This game, there's no way this game happens without Twilight Struggle being the precursor. This game is very much a descendant of Twilight Struggle. Now here's the thing. You may be thinking, is it a clone of Twilight Struggle? No. This is much, much, much lighter than Twilight Struggle. Twilight Struggle is a, you know, easily a two and a half, three hour game. 13 Days is a 45 minute game. So it's very, it's a lot shorter, it's a lot less complicated. But it is unmistakably in that mold. It is very, very much a game that, that, that is, um, that owes a lot to, uh, Twilight Struggle. Is it derivative? Yeah, I guess you could say it's derivative of Twilight Struggle, certainly. So the question is, is this game... Well, first of all, let's look at the game on its own merits. Is it a fun game? Yes. Yes, it is. Very fun, and I'll tell you why it's fun. It's a fun game because, like I say, um, I've said this a hundred times, the best games are games that make you make tough choices and make tough choices a lot every turn ideally this is a game every turn you'll be thinking how do i how do i play this 
how which card which card do I play that's going to benefit me the most but not tip my hand not let the other guy know what I'm trying to score how do I do that and that's again a lot like Twilight Struggle but it's a lot like I mean, I mean, I mean it's that same kind of tension you get in Twilight Struggle you get here with that with that system you're making these tough choices again this is a chess game this is a chess game how do I make this work and how do I out bluff the other guy I mean how do I make him not see what I I need him to not see I, I didn't phrase that right but you know what I'm saying how do I how do I get his attention here when I need to work here I don't think this is a Twilight struggle clone it's it is different enough because it is light enough that it's it, I, I while this game reminds me a lot of Twilight struggle it's not Twilight struggle it is its own game I feel fairly confident to saying despite the similarities, it, both in theme and in mechanics, it is its own game, and it offers something new. It, it, the experience here is, I don't think I've ever played a game that played, a two-player game that played this fast, that to me, works so well both thematically and mechanically. This is, this, frankly, was a delight. This was a surprise and a delight, this game. Uh, I really enjoyed it, uh, frankly, more than I thought I would. I kind of thought going into this, at best, it would just seem like a cheap imitation of Twilight Struggle. It's not. It's its, its own game. It is somewhat derivative, but it's, it's its own game. Really liked it. Tough choices every turn and... You know, I I like that it's that it's as quick as it is for what it is. If it were a longer game, if this were a two-hour game, I'd say, screw it, go play Twilight Struggle. But it's not. It's a forty-five-minute game, at most. I think I think if people once people get playing it, they'll probably get even quicker at it, because it's. I mean, you're agonizing over choices, but still, it's just not going to be that that long a game. And it's great. It works. It's wonderful. I was thoroughly impressed and thoroughly surprised with this game. So I'm going to stop babbling now. And I'm just going to tell you, you want to buy this one. Seriously. If you like Twilight Struggle, buy this game. If you haven't played Twilight Struggle, buy this game. And then buy Twilight Struggle because you need that game. Every gamer needs Twilight Struggle. Um, if you hated Twilight Struggle, you might want to give this a shot. Because it's a lot lighter. And it still offers a, a good... Uh, really good solid mechanics and and a fun theme i love history uh, i'm a historian myself as many of you know and i love the history here this game even comes with kind of a, a booklet on a history of the cold war and, and kind of elaborates on some of the cards and stuff and i always appreciate that in a in a, in a game so i'm going to shut up now buy this game you'll love it Thank you once again for joining us today on The Discriminating Gamer. As always, we ask you to please leave a comment for us on YouTube, on Board Game Geek, on our Facebook page, or on thediscriminatinggamer.com. We ask you to please like us on Facebook, subscribe to us on YouTube, and follow us on Twitter. We are The Discriminating Gamer. We all breathe the same air. We all cherish our children's futures. And we are all mortal. Chowder. Please somebody help me on my feet again. And I don't know where I'm going. And I don't know where I've been. Somebody help me on the solid ground. It's a long time, and I'll be dying. Once a year, I wind up in the band. And this is how you select your actions. On your turn, you're gonna take all of the little stones in one of the bowls and move them do, do, clockwise. And the bowl you end up at, that's the action you do. So your actions are limited, and then, ah, uh, 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 there, you see, it kind of clogs up, and it limits what you can do and if you want to do the same action a few times you have to really think about it think of it like a little rotary phone